Humanity as we know it today had emerged from three brothers, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, sons of Noah and his wife, but there is one mystery in this family. Who is Noah's wife? Such a mysterious but important figure has caused many to search for the sources of whom that woman is. For those who have read the biblical story of the flood, this question is a fairly common one. We read about Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, but we are not told the names of Noah's wife or his son's wives. We only know the names of four of the eight people who survived the flood. Noah's wife's name appears for the first time in the fourth chapter of Genesis. The text describes her as the daughter of Lamech and the sister of Tubal Cain, who comes from the Cain dynasty. Not much was written about Naamah in the Bible, a fact that intensified the sense of mystery surrounding her character, which inspired storytellers to embellish her character with different biographical details over the years. Her character was given three different interpretations over the generations. According to one interpretation, Naamah was Noah's wife. In the second interpretation, she is the wife of one of Noah's sons. In the last interpretation, Naamah is viewed in a completely different light, as Satan's wife. Today we will explore Naamah as Noah's wife. According to the sources, Naamah lived 1,500 years, making her the longest living person in history. To find out who Naamah is, we need to look at the lineage of Adam and Eve's descendants. In the line of the sons of Anash, Lamech gives birth to Noah, and it seems that the equivalent of Noah in the line of the sons of Cain is Naamah. Noah and Naamah are the last link in the lineages of Cain and Anash, parallel to each other. Noah is Naamah's husband, both of them being an expression of the element of comfort that their generation longed for and expected. It is possible that this is also the basis behind the interpretation. The two dynasties developed separately, until at a certain point they were united by Noah and Naamah, and this as the key to the new world that was to be built after the flood that swept upon the world. Naamah is the daughter of Zillah and Lamech. Lamech followed the custom of men of his generation, taking two wives, one, Ada, who would bear his children and perpetuate his seed, and the other for the purpose of fulfilling his desires. According to the Bible, not just Ada, but also Zillah also brought children to Lamech. This is very important information. Even so, Zillah was not there to bear him children and despite that, she bore him Tubal-Cain and Naamah. Zillah also had a son, Tubal-Cain, who forged all kinds of tools out of bronze and iron. Tubal-Cain's sister was Naamah. Genesis 4 verse 22 Naamah, Noah's wife, finds herself alone in the effort to rebuild the world. This happens after her husband, Noah, builds a vineyard and begins drinking the wine he produces. We see this in the story when his two sons cover his nakedness after he becomes drunk. In the Noah story, it says she had to go into the ark and then come out of it. Besides that, we don't know much about her. But according to the commentary, it was none other than Naamah, daughter of Lamech, who was 500 years older than Noah. Her name was given because her actions were pleasant. It is similar to the name of Noah, who was also a calm and pleasant man. How can it be that the figure how responsible for building the world after the flood disappears from the scriptures and is not mentioned at all? The story of the flood mentions Noah's wife five times, along with her sons and daughter-in-law. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. Genesis 6 verse 18 And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives entered the ark to escape the waters of the flood. 
Genesis 7 verse 7. On that very day Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. Genesis 7 verse 13. Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Genesis 8 verse 16. So Noah came out, together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives. Genesis 8 verse 18. When the flood stops, Noah sends the raven and then the dove to find out if the waters have eased. After it becomes clear to him that it is possible to get out of the ark, Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives and all the animals that were in the ark come out, and are ordered to breed and multiply and not to kill. By humans shall their blood be shed. Genesis 9 verse 6 Those who kill will be punished by God, according to God's words to the new humanity. God makes a covenant with Noah and his family and promises that Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood, never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Genesis 9 verse 11 Just as Noah was saved because he was a righteous man, so his wife Naamah was saved from the flood due to her pleasant ways and good deeds, and she was also the one responsible for the resurrection of the world. At every moment of the stay in the ark, Noah runs around and works constantly to take care of the needs of all the animals. According to interpretation, Naamah was the one who was responsible for took care of the growing of the plants, the fruit trees and the field. At the genesis of chapter 9, when Noah became depressed after leaving the ark, and perhaps because he was filled with fear from dealing with the new world. In an attempt to avoid responsibility, he started getting drunk, basking in drink inside his tent in a blatant and immodest way. The situation reached such a point that a terrible conflict was caused between Noah and his son. And he wakes up, gets angry and curses his son. Noah's wife Naamah is not present in these moments, possibly due to her inability to deal with the new world and the new situation. Or maybe the situation turned out differently, when Noah collapsed, she was the one who took the leadership and kept the family together. After the flood, when Noah collapsed, it is possible that she was the one who managed to hold the yoke, and continued where Noah fell, while she was busy building the new world. And perhaps Noah failed because he could not stand in the shadow of his wife, and it is possible that he allowed himself to collapse precisely because he knew that there was someone who would take responsibility in his place. Eve, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah and Rachel, names of biblical mothers like these have endured long after they were first written more than two and a half thousand years ago. They are among some of the most common names still in use around the world today. Within the narrative of Genesis, they walked alongside their husbands and even took center stage at times. However the name of one important woman, is conspicuously absent from the story found in the biblical text, Noah's wife. This brave woman stood by her husband as he toiled at building a huge wooden ark in anticipation of a great flood that was supposed to come. And when it eventually rained, she faithfully entered the ark alongside her equally nameless daughters-in-law to be saved from the flood. Once the floodwaters receded, she and her family were the only people left on earth. Like Eve before her, this woman became the mother of the entire human race. Despite that, her name remains a mystery. If you know her another story, feel free to share the story of Noah's wife in the comments. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. You can share with us what you know by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you so much and see you next time.